Hi, welcome to Tesla Grow Green's assembly instructional video for the Deeper Tolly Tesla Coil transmitters. Well, without further ado, let us begin. These are some of the items, or all of the items, I should say, you shall receive within your kit. Let us first start off by placing all the male header pins onto the board. I like to get something very easy to work on so I can spin my board around and solder and work at the same time for myself. These are the male header pins. As you can see, they come in a, a long strip and we can just break them off and insert them as we need them. So I'll insert the header pins so you can see. Another one goes into the transmitter right over here. A double one goes right here for the fan. Break off into two. Add it right into here. And if you've ordered the one with disposable spark gap. So you're going to receive one of these. You do not have to solder header pins in here. Just slip them in the last three to four hours of continuous use. And when they burn out, just take them out and put a new one in. But if you like uh, something a little bit more permanent, the gas electrode. So. Let us continue on with the instructions. Solder the 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter female DC power jack socket, which is right here. This is where we're going to use to power it up. Place her on the board. I like to use a bit of scotch tape over them, flip it over and solder it for the sake of the video. We're just going to be placing them on. Next, we're going to want to solder the six pin push button toggle switch. Now, it doesn't matter which orientation you get it in, it will work either way. So simply, you may have to bend them a little bit in to get them into the holes nicely, but it goes in perfectly just like that. Next, we would like to put in and solder the LED. One is marked on the board for the LED light, as you can see right here, LED one. Grab our LED light. The light's negative is the short wire. Well, look at that, that sucker's got a mind of its own, the short wire. So right here is the short lead, as you can see. So zoom in on that, okay. And the negative part is the flat side of the circle. The short goes onto the flat side, just like so. I like to bend the leads on, these to solder them in so they'll be held in on the bottom side. Next, we want to solder the resistor. Excellent. And now it doesn't matter the orientation of the resistor, there's no polarity. Right here is the resistor that shall come in. Give it a nice magic bend, and it'll come out pretty good like that pretty fast. Okay. You can use a tool to help bend. Get a 3D print one of those up. You put your resistor on and then you just bend them down. But you probably don't need to. And the resistor goes right here. And I like to bend those down to hold it in. And next, we would like to put the two wires. So, for the sake of the video, I'm going to pretend that I have wired on one red into the positive and my other white into the positive, which will be cut to the right size to go on. Next step is to place the power booster module and solder the two unconnected copper wires, which we just soldered onto here imaginarily, onto the booster. So, well, look at this. There they are. And the booster plugs just like that into the second set right here at the end, as you can clearly see. Solder those on, just like that. Let you see it again. Those will be soldered there. The white wire goes into the negative, and the red wire goes into the positive, 
which would have already been soldered on, allegedly. Okay, excellent. And we're gonna use double-sided sticky tape, which we will cut, mount on. I like to bend down the transistors to make room for the fan. Next, we would like to solder the ceramic disc capacitor. All right, you can't miss this one. 50 volts, 0.1 UF, as you can see right here. Now, once again, polarity does not matter on this. So you can put it in any which way. And that is right over here in C3. You can just follow everything here. It is marked on the board, just like that. Next, we're gonna to wanna to put our rectifier, L7805, onto the IC1 part of the board. This is our five volt rectifier. Believe it or not, there's a lot of work that goes into this. It goes in right like that. And we would like to put the back side onto just like that in the instructions. Okay. Next, we like to solder and put on the aluminum electrolyte capacitor 25 volt 10 UF to C2 marked on the board. Here we go. This polarity does matter, as you can clearly see, the short end will be the negative and the long will be the positive, which is clearly marked on the board with a plus and a minus, for positive and negative. Put those in just like that. And they'll all be soldered in just like that. Next, we're gonna move over to the electrode spark gap, if that's the one that you're gonna be using. And we're gonna place that on the board and solder to the header pins. Okay, so since we're gonna be using the permanent, we're going to install our header pins, which will be right here. Always put the uh, short ends, as you see, into the board and I leave the long ends out of here. And this will be double tape, cut nicely onto the back. If you like it looking nice, I hope you do. And you're gonna stick right here. And you're gonna bend these out slightly, like so. And this way, you can solder them right onto those two pins with your soldering iron, just like that. Just make sure they just are bent out enough to touch. And that's all you have to do. Put them in, solder them on. Stick it on, and I will show you that in one jiffy second. Next, we're gonna solder on 0.01 UF 8000 volt capacitor. And I gave you guys extra power. It will last extra long time. She won't blow it at any time. This will last very, very overpowered. It goes right here. That's where your capacitor goes, just like that. You can imagine that's already stuck on, so don't worry. Next, we're gonna add our wires and solder them to the male headers, and we're gonna move over to the back side of the board. So the wire that we're speaking of at the moment would be over here. So I'm gonna move the board to show you so you can all see. All right, there we go. So the last wire on this side of the board, you would have stripped. And we're gonna solder on right here, just like that on top of the two header pins. Now we're gonna move over to the other side of the board. Okay, we're moving right along. I thought of the jumper, port P1, surface mount P2. If I had a wire across from 9A over to a Plantagon transmitter. I have started her case on the back and the front, I shall show you what I have done and how to do it. Let's just flip it around, very easy this way. One side left, take the washer, goes underneath just like so, whoopsie. Take your 12 mil long screw, add it through, kind of like that. Take your standoff, 25, 30 mil, depending on which one you get, and add it right in. This 
this is the fastest way to assemble, I find. And take your small screw. We'll add that right in the bottom, just like that. You need a Phillips screwdriver to put these in, a small one. And it's as easy as that to just assemble the case. So you see I have my ground wire attached to ground it for later. We have our zip ties ready to go around for our flyback transformer that we're going to attach to our labeled four ports. Very easy to do. As you can see, our standoffs and our short screws and our fan are all put together. But I'll show you what I did to put the fan together. So you can see the same orientation. I placed it simply underneath as such. I used our metal screw through the top. And then I used our bolt on the bottom. Repeated four ways. Attach the red wire to positive onto our fan. Very simple, very easy, and look at that. These are transistors slightly bent to the side to give room right here, and right here, and here for the fan. The case is quite low, aerodynamic. Keep it very stylish. Okay, so we're gonna move ahead now. We're gonna install the flyback transformer. All right, we have our flyback transformer soldered to the side. You will get in the kit, similar to this, labeled to simply follow onto your board. NR, NG, out Y, out B to the flyback transformer. After you have it soldered on, then you can choose to solder it on at any time before the case or after. You can zip tie it to the back, which is simply going through the core eight four core, the flyback itself, and the holes you see right here. Very simple. Snap that on like that. I want these to be on very tight. Slip it right through. Just guide that one through the bottom hole. It'll go through the same hole the other one went through. Let's give it a little bit of a guide. Just like that. It's definitely a little tricky. And that's what the video is for, to show you the tips and tricks. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to snip that. Snip that. Okay. It's pretty much as easy as that. Get your flyback transformer. All the wires are labeled. Match directly up to your board. Solder them on. Attach your zip ties to the back. One through the hole this way and one through the hole this way. And that is it. We're ready to give it a test run. Let's get a little battery here. Don't forget to hook up your ground wire. Okay. A little 9 volt power supply. Turn her on. You also have an on switch right here. Perfect. Wow. Thunder. 
Look at that. She's alive. We'll illuminate an electrical charge throughout the air. Can illuminate fluorescent light bulb. This can run 24 hours a day. It's uh, pretty easy to handle. You have a moving fan, do not touch. You don't get much of a shock if you touch it on the end down here. As you can see, I like to hold it just from here. Just like that. Place it by your plants any way you'd like. Once you ground it, you'll get far more power out of it. As you can already see, it's picking up just like that. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed tips and tricks. And for safe handling, every time you're done using your Gibertoli Tesla coil, be sure to shut her off and discharge it. Use any tool you like right here. And that's it. Safe to handle from this point on. Thank you.